And now, on to those we are honoring tonight. A veteran of five teams over the seven years of the WHA's existence, Andre Lacroix will go down as the all-time leader in points scored in league history by over 100 points. He also leads the league in assists by almost 200 points and in games played. A veteran of 300 NHL games with the Flyers and Blackhawks, Lacroix was a 50-goal scorer with the Philadelphia Blazers in the inaugural season. He also scored more than 110 points as a member of the San Diego Mariners and Houston Arrows before finishing his WHA career with the New England Whalers. Andre Lacroix, a legend in the World Hockey Association. And today we also acknowledge and honor Alton White, the first player of color in the World Hockey Association and only the second at the time in major pro hockey. Alton started his WHA career with the New York Raiders, unaware that he was making history. Growing up in Winnipeg, Alton claimed the legendary Sugar Jim Henry, noticed him around the rink at the age of 10 and recognized his talent. After being traded mid-season to the Los Angeles Sharks, Alton scored a remarkable 20 goals in his rookie pro season, including his first hat trick against the Chicago Cougars, the first ever black player to accomplish that feat. He then duplicated that against the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Today we honor WHA legend Alton White. Now a tribute to a player who after 10 years and over 500 games in the NHL finished his playing career with Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers during the final WHA season. Ace Bailey only appeared in 38 games but acted as a mentor to the great one and formed a lifelong friendship that tragically ended on 9-11. Ace was like a father to me. Uh, we were best friends. Uh, he was just, he, as Glenn was my sort of uh, mentor and, and, and coaching me and guiding me and all that, Ace was sort of like my best friend. And so, you know, I was with him all the time. He took me under his wing. Mm -hmm. I used to be with him and his wife continuously. His son at that time was one year old. And, you know, we used to travel all the time. And I was, as people know, I was never a good flyer. And he, Ace used to sort of calm me down and ease me and relax me. And I always used to say to him that one of the things I was always frightened of. And uh, it's so ironic or so dis unbelievable mm -hmm. that he ends up dying in 9-11. And it was one of the things I talked about in the times we were together, we traveled to Europe and mm -hmm. we traveled around North America. And um, there's no question in my life that had it not been for him, I don't think my career would have been the same. Bailey wasn't always on the ice to ride shotgun for the young Gretzky, but even when he was relegated to the bench, somehow found a way to look out for him. We were playing in Quebec City one night and um, they had a tough guy and I forget, the Jill's Billado. Billado, bad news Billado, yeah. And he hit me, and I was 17. I mean, I was 145 pounds. Yeah. He hit me pretty hard. And Ace, uh, Ace said to me, um, Gretz, when you get the puck next time, get that guy following you and bring him by the bench. And I said, well, what do you want me to do that for? He goes, first of all, he says, I can't get on the ice. Lots of won't play me. <laughs> I said, okay. So get on the ice. Bill will starts chasing me. And I'm skating. Next thing I know, I look back. The whistle goes, and Jill's Billado is out cold. <laughs> He's lying there, and the whole bench is pointing like this, like somebody threw something. And what happened was, you know, in those days there was no cameras, right. there was no TV. As Villado went by the bench, Ace put a stick out and just <laughs> hit him right here and knocked him out cold. And the whole bench was blaming that somebody threw something from the stands, and Villado was out cold. <laughs> Back to the man who started it all, we honor the late visionary who, along with Davidson and Baldwin, made the WHA a reality. Oh yeah, well, the NHL controlled everything and they, they kept salaries secret. You're like, what are they trying to do? But I don't mind saying, <laughs> they were very set in their ways. At the time the WHA was formed, you had what you call a perpetual reserve clause. Even though it was only a one-year contract, you were bound to that team forever. There were many smaller areas in Canada and the United States that deserved to have professional hockey. 